Hello and welcome to our webinar from requirements to code generation and back with uh, Siemens Polarian ALM and ANSYS Gate. My name is Thorsten Stahlberg. I'm at Siemens uh, Digital Industry Software in the role of portfolio development for Polarian ALM. Today we have prepared a nice trip in our electrical racing car the so-called E-Rod and will take you on a journey to show many advantages of combining the two tools Polarian ALM and ANSYS Skate. Uh, your drivers for today are Susan Faust. Susan is a pre-sales consultant at Siemens for Polarian ALM and Susan's role in the journey today is the requirements manager. And we have Martin Meiler. Martin is a business development manager for embedded software at CADFEM. And Martin's role in the journey today is the software engineer. Having this said, it's time to hand over to Susan and let the trip begin. Enjoy. Yeah, thank you, Thorsten. And also welcome everyone from my side. As Thorsten already mentioned, we would like to, to take you today on a road trip. And what can you expect just to give you a bit like a feeling what, what you can expect from this road trip? So in the first step, we're going to start the road trip with real-time software monitoring. After identifying an issue in our software, we're jumping into an end-to-end -end process from the issue itself through the risk into a change management start. And then we will speed up in, um, in our car going forward into an integrated model-based software development process and reaching then the next level of model-based fault identification, modification and code generation to finally arrive at the last road trip stop where we arrive at the version based change request to finish our trip. And through the full trip, we will see the whole time the landscape of a full traceability from the requirements to the model into the code and also back. So I hope right now you're curious and I hope you have already fastened up your seatbelts because we will start right now. But as, as Thorsten already mentioned, we won't do this road trip just in a normal car. We would like to do this today in a special car, in an electrical racing car. We call this electrical racing car our E-Rod. And this E-Rod is not only an electrical car, instead it is partially also already an autonomous driving car. So for example, we have already integrated in our E-Rod a software function for the adaptive cruise control system. And that means we have already integrated this software function into our E-Rod and we have already started the full development process for the software function. But just to give you a feeling what we have done in advance to start this road trip. So at the really first beginning, we had the product requirements. They are part of the environment in Polarian. What we have done, we have really taken all the dedicated technical information of our E-Rod and out of these technical product information, we have derived for our software function, the dedicated application requirements. We have also integrated these requirements in Polarian and have linked these kind of information back to the product level. Based on the application requirements, we have then in the next step created a model for the software function and this model has been created in Ansel Skate. And based on these first three essential steps, then we have also created in Polarian the full application verification test process. So meaning we have created, first of all, the full documentation of the test cases for our EROD and what has been um, tested or what we had to test for this software configuration and software function. And based on these test cases, we have then created a dedicated test run and this test, this test run we have executed automatically in a simulation based driven um, verification test process. And this kind of information we have also displayed back into our engineering platform Polarian to have the full traceability. So let's assume right now we have already done these kind of steps before for our software function of the adaptive cruise control system. And right now we have done the full final verification. Everything is fine and we have integrated also this software function in our E-Rod and our E-Rod is right now ready for the road and we're going to monitor our software function. 
So let's imagine right now you have started the road trip in the E-Rod, driving on the street, perhaps even the sun is shining and it's quiet on the road. So you think you don't need for now, you don't need the adaptive cruise control system. So for, for now and what you what you're doing is you're switching off the button for the ACC, but you're identifying that currently even when you're pushing off the um, this button, then the ACC is still running. So what you do is you would like to communicate with the EROD and identifying this kind of, of issue. So basically not you, but your co-driver, of course you are driving, um, is going to start a new issue in your EROD customer app to give a notification to me as a requirements engineer that there is a new issue. So in me, as a requirements engineer, I'm getting this notification. And what I'm doing is basically in the first step, I'm just checking my dashboard, having a look on the asset management from our EROD. And in fact, there is an issue regarding the ACC sensor. So immediately what I'm doing is I'm checking this in my engineering platform Polarian. So jumping into this platform, having a look on my tracking overview and identifying. In fact, yes, there is a new software issue identified regarding the ACC. So first of all, I will just assign this issue to me to making sure that someone takes care of it. And what I'm just doing in a first step, I'm moving this issue into a first risk assessment and having a look if there's already an existing risk um, in the system. And yes, there is. There's already a risk available saying the ACC switch not off after pressing the button. And this risk is also linked to a requirement. So let's have a look. Let's jump into the document. What the requirement says and the requirement says the cruise control shall automatically go off when the off button is pressed. So usually seems good to me from a requirement perspective. So what I'm doing is basically I would like to check this with our software developer Martin. So I'm first of all linking this requirement right now also to this available new risk to making sure that we have the full traceability also from the requirement to this issue and also to communicate better with Martin. I'm just assigning Martin also right now to this issue. And giving him also some further information what he needs to do. So dear Martin, please check right now the implementation and giving also a hint that he needs to check the implementation regarding the linked requirement of the document. And once I'm I've started this, then Martin will get a notification, our software developer, and he needs to check right now what happened in the system. And right now I would like to hand over to Martin. Thank you, Susan. So also from my side, welcome to our webinar and I as software developer no, uh, registered notification that I have something to do. So let's see what is going on and where I have to check something. So I open my Polarian instance. I go to my Polarian and I will see whether anything new has arrived here and I can see OK here a new issue has been uh, sent or assigned to me. This is some kind of software defect. Okay, the description is uh, um, a feedback from the field. The ACC has not been off even so it should be off and yeah, Susan notified me that I should maybe check the implementation and the linked requirement. Ah, okay, down there, there's a linked work item. I just click on it and then the referring requirement is shown. Maybe I better open this in the complete document. Uh, yeah, there it is. OK, so the ACC should automatically be off uh, when the off button is pressed. Seems good. And, and there's also something, an implementation link. So this is a link where in SCADE this requirement has been identified or um, realized. OK, so I click here on this um, HTML reference. So in the background now we have a SCADE server running that is making sure that the correct SCADE model will be loaded. And uh, since SCADE is a desktop app and Polarium is a web app, um, we need some kind of interface. Now the correct project has been loaded. Um, and 
in a few moments we should see how this uh, application looks like. Yeah, this is the cruise control application. Um, I need to jump back to Polarion once since he at the program start couldn't uh, directly highlight the issue. So the referring skate element. Let's see now I reopen and re-register. Now, yeah, here you can see it. Down here, I can see that this transition from one state machine state to another seems to have a problem. And now um, I need to make sure where this uh, originally stems from. Um, but maybe at first, let me uh, show you some elements of the SCADE user interface. Here on the top, you can see some toolbars that allow you to realize your model-based software. On the left-hand side, you can see the project structure of your certain software project. You can see something called packages, something compared to like namespaces. We can see operators. We can also see certain library elements that are included in this project here. And then in the central area of your application, of your user interface, you can see the editing space. This is where your model-based software is realized and there you can also see what you have uh, created so far. In this window, you can see the requirements that have initially been imported from Polarion and requirements in bold are already linked with uh, SCADE model artifacts and those in normal font style still need to be linked. How this can be done, we will see uh, later in that webinar still. And then the last segment that I want to show you is this um, elements of predefined operators. Those are basic language elements of the SCADE um, yeah, programming language that allow us to realize safety critical embedded software. So um, what we can see at this point is that um, those operators can be realized here. Um, we can see that transition that is between two states and um, yeah, now we need to identify where the problem is really stemming from. And uh, let me at first explain how this software is working. So what we see here is one state. So this is the initial state with a bold line uh, of a state machine. And we have two states, off and enabled. And to go from one state to the other, we have certain transitions that are triggered. Here we have now um, our logic available and we can see that there's another state machine inside this enabled state and this um, state machine is making sure that we have uh, two different states um, here we defer whether we are in standby mode or whether the cruise control is currently on and whether it's on or in standby state there we have that standby condition and this is triggered down there here we can see an operator with two inputs, the local cruise speed and the current vehicle speed. And on the right hand side, we can see the throttle command, how the throttle should be applied. If we want to take a look inside this operator, we can see that there we've got a proportional integral regulator that is carrying out the regulation of our cruise speed. Um, so we have the vehicle speed, the um, cruise speed that is requested with a proportional path and an integral path. So far, this is everything that we need to explain concerning our application. The next thing to do is um, that uh, we have several um, um, operators available here. An operator is constructed of basic SCADE elements and SCADE itself is also a programming language. And since it's a programming language, we have the possibility to realize safety critical C code by a certain transition. And therefore we're using a qualified code generator that we'll see also later on. Now, since we have introduced our software, we need to identify where the problem originally stems from. And therefore we go forward and use another tool that SCADE is arriving with that's called Design Verifier. And Design Verifier is a tool that allows us to ask questions. And the question to be asked here is, is it possible that um, we can be not in the off state, even though that the off button has been activated? So this is the question that we need to, be, to ask 
to that tool design verifier and now we um, have to find out how to realize something like that. Here on the left hand side we see that we have certain proofs right here. We can see our cruise control operator. And what we also can see is that it has several inputs. Here the second from the top is the off input and here we can see the cruise state and then on the right hand side we see another operator and in this operator it is checked. Mm, this is what we can see here whether it is possible that the cruise date um, is off. No, it has to be the cruise date has to be off if the off button is pressed. And the question is, can this be falsified? So is it possible that we pressed off? However, the cruise date is not in state off. This is the question to be placed here. Now we are switching to the design verifier mode and here we can see that we have the property number three and we now run the analysis. So in the background design verifier is running. It is finished pretty fast and here we can see that this uh, question can be falsified and this is of course not good because this is um, against what the requirement has been saying and so we have to analyze where this stems from. When design verifier identifies such a scenario, then he automatically creates an input vector that can be used and loaded into our skate suite simulator. This is what's done now. And here we have again this proof operator. Now we will just take a look inside our cruise control operator. We will open it and then we will just perform one single step and we will see what is happening. So we carry out one single step. Now you can see with uh, Magenta what has been happening. So we can see that the off input is true. However, the on input is also true. We have priorly been in the off state and since now off and on have been pressed, there's only one transition to the enable state. And here the problem results from. So this transition to the on state is not exactly what has to be implemented. Therefore, we identified the problem. Now we can go back to the implementation. We leave our simulator since we know now at which point we need to modify our software. So we switch back to our operator and now there are two options of modifying this um, transition. So this is a Boolean condition. So that means on the one hand, we could just modify it like um, if on is true and at the same time off has not been pressed. So on and not off would be the correct um, Boolean condition to carry out that transition. This is one option of solving this problem, but we could also do it in another way. So I just reset this and put it back how it has been. So just on. We also have the possibility to create a new transition from the off state back to the off state. And here we say if the off input is triggered, then we want to stay in the off state. If we do this, you can see now there are little numbers one and two. This is the priority of the transitions. Of course, the off transition is the more important one. Therefore, we move it up in that um, in that uh, list element box. And now we can see that the off transition has priority one, the on transition has priority two. And this finally should fix the problem. And this is what we need to check right now. So we can re-trigger evaluating our property and then we will see whether this condition that we initially saw can still be falsified. I think there was still something going on. Therefore, I will repeat the execution of this um, analysis. So design verifier is running. Now let's see what is the result. OK, now it's valid. That means the problem could be resolved and we are now able to finally um, yeah, commit the changes and see um, what we could do else. So now it is fixed and we can find out um, which are the next elements to be carried out. Now we modified something. A critical element is of course at this point to test the modified application. So in order to do so, we start our tests and we have also within the SCATE toolchain integrated test possibilities. In order to run those tests, I switch back to a 
test um, view here and I activate a certain test project. Once it is activated, I have the possibility to uh, yeah, carry out all tests that are bound to this project. I just here uh, click on run test and in the background, now the C code is generated and the application is um, executed with certain input vectors that are uh, used and I will check the outputs of the referring operators. Here we can see that everything is green. That looks good so far. If any of those tests would have failed, we would see something in red color now here. If we open it, you can see here that in certain steps, certain uh, parameters have been checked concerning the expected value and the real value that is obtained from the program itself. So here everything is fine so far. Of course, these were well, the normal, normal TOS test suite examples. One thing that's also important is, of course, the coverage analysis. And now we will execute here the model coverage. And for SCADE, we have the special situation that there's no difference between the model coverage analysis and the code coverage analysis. Since we always generate C code, there's absolutely no difference. Now that coverage analysis is over and we receive that model coverage report. And this is a textual report that can be checked. And on the lower side, we can see the result of that text. We can see for three of those operators, coverage is 100%. But here for the cruise control operator, we only have a coverage of 94%. Why is this the case? We could now either dive through um, all these elements here and try to investigate where that problem stems from. But here we see that the operator cruise control is depicted in red color. So we just open it. And here we have a useful um, tool that shows us where in green everything is fine. So model coverage means for different, uh, that you've got a Boolean condition that two different cases are taken into account. But here, everything that is depicted in yellow, there you can see that only one uh, Boolean value has been executed. And here you can see that we it seems like we don't have any test examples where the vehicle speed is lower than the minimum vehicle speed where this cruise control is working or higher than the maximum speed that is working with. If we wanted to change that, we could, of course, just add new text, uh, test examples, but that's not the correct way. We needed to contact our test engineer and ask him to introduce more, um, more um, test cases in Polarion, of course. Another thing that we could do is if we think that it is not a problem, then we can justify why the coverage is not required. And if we justify it, then here a record will be created and this record will also be part of your test um, report that you have to present to the um, certifying authority. And so therefore it should be a good reason why you think that full model coverage is not required at that point. Since now all test cases have been uh, passed successfully, next step would be to push the modified software to our software versioning system. One thing that we still need to uh, take a look upon is the code generation, one of the central aspects of uh, the SCADE um, environment. Therefore, we take a look how to create C code using the SCADE key CG, the qualified code generator. If we want to do this, we can see easily that um, we can see, um, modify here on top one of the destinations what we want to do. One of that configurations is named KCG. And there you can see that for this cruise control operator, we want to generate um, C code. But at first we can also run a check whether this operator has been implemented properly. And this is a semantic check where we can analyze our complete software, whether everything is correct, whether the correct data types have been used. Then we can click here on generate code. And now the code generator is realizing some C code files. This is the report that you can see down here. And now we can uh, take a look uh, on maybe two elements at one of the header file of the generated C code of the cruise control operator, and then also on the implementation on the C file of that cruise control operator. 
So now both lemons are opened. Here on top of this, you can see that here a structure, so an input structure has been created, and this input structure correlates with all of these operator inputs that have been used with the cruise control operator. And additionally, we also see that an output structure is created and that output structure contains all outputs of our operator and also some internal um, variables that are used for memory purposes. The implementation can be seen here and what we basically see is you know, several state machines that have been implemented and you can see that the implementation looks like some switch case elements basically and some if statements and you can also see that uh, some comments can be found concerning, concerning certain requirements that have been realized. So now we are ready concerning uh, the implementation. We saw that the C code has been generated. Maybe one step that is still interesting is how to establish traceability information between Polarion requirements and code elements uh, or um, model artifacts of SCADE. In order to see that, I will switch over to some not yet linked requirements. Here we have some requirements that are describing some parameters to be realized. So at first here we have the minimum speed. That means I mark the requirement and I also mark here the referring speed min variable and I can just drag that uh, constant onto this requirement on the right hand side and then automatically the link, the referring link between the model artifact and the requirement can be realized. The same can also be done for example for that speed maximum. You can also drag that onto the referring requirement and another option of realizing those requirements is by just marking the requirement and the um, model artifact and then here clicking on that chain icon in order to do so. Once that I'm ready, I can push those changes back to Polarion and then I can also review in Polarion the model artifacts. So the final step is now that we move back to Polarion and tell Susan that we seem to have made a good job and that we need to change something concerning the requirements because it was not uh, that obvious that it had to be changed. Therefore, I go back to my software defect. I add another comment down here that maybe we should add or modify this requirement concerning the off button and should take into account that it is possible that the off and the on button can be pressed at the same time for whatever reason. And then this is the first thing that we do. And then I go to my traffic tracking view and just drag this defect to the change request that has been started. And by doing this, I can hand over to Susan again and we will see what will happen next. Correct. In the meantime, I was working on different projects in, in my Polarian instance and I'm just looking at um, at the time and I uh, was wondering if Martin has already done so far something. So I'm going back to my also my track view and I see in fact the software issue has been moved into a change request started and has been assigned to me back. So let's just first of all check if there's any kind of information from Martin. And yes, Martin has gave me an information start change request for linked requirement and at also the option of both buttons and pressed at the same time. OK. Let's do this. So therefore, first of all, of course, we have our software function already in a version 1.0. So what we are doing right now is we are we are first of all would like to see the full container. And what we're doing is we are reusing the full container of the version 1.0. And changing this into a version 1.1. Based on our change request, which we will which we are going to do right now is and then also to making sure that we can work right now in the document itself then we're changing right now also the we're changing the document into the latest version of the document and jumping into this container view and jumping into the right requirement and here what we're doing going to do is we're adding these kind of option 
saying the cruise control shall automatically go off when the off button is pressed, even when both buttons are pressed. All right. And once this is done right now with this change request, we can really freeze the full status of this into a version 1.1. So what we're doing is basically we are reusing, we are creating, we're creating right now a baseline with the frozen status 1.1. And finally, we're moving our software pattern into a closed status saying, okay, the change request has been done. So far, so good. Right now we have done this change request and you might ask yourself perhaps why we haven't, for example, checked if there's any, any other kind of changes we have to take care of, for example, for the testing aspect. So in Polarian, I've just checked my suspect report based on this change, and we do have an integrated suspect management possibility. So meaning by changing my requirement, I can also identify if there's perhaps, or if there may be a, a suspect, which is perhaps like a linked to a test case, and we also have to double check the test case. In fact, I have done this, nothing happened, that, that was fine. So for now, we are really done with our change request. Um, and what we're going to do right now is we will push this new software function, this modified software function back into our EROT by an over the air update. And what we're going to do is we're going to inform you as a driver for this EROT about the customer app that the issue has been solved and that we are um, done with our work and that basically you can go ahead with your road trip. And I hope you got a bit like a feeling from our road trip, um, how you can, first of all, yeah, how you can do the full real time software monitoring from an existing software function, which is on the market. Seeing how you can do the full end to end issue risk and change management and then jumping into the integrated model based software development. And having also look into the model based fault identification modification and also code generation to finally also have at the end a final and finished change request and a version based status. And through this full process, we hope you got a feeling that we have a full end to end traceability from the requirement side in Polarian to the model in ANSA SCADE into the code and also back into Polarian. And I hope you are right now also still curious about further topics and we're looking forward your questions right now.